This is In The Black, a leadership, strategy and business podcast brought to you by CPA Australia. I'm Jessica Muddett. In this series, we speak to leading career and employment experts to bring you the latest strategies and tips to help supercharge your career. The skills required of accountants and finance professionals are evolving faster than ever before. To help us understand where the employment market is heading, I'm speaking to Layla O'Kane, Research Director at Lightcast, a global labour market data specialist based in Boston. Welcome, Layla. It's great to have you here. Thanks so much. It's great to be here. You've recently co-authored several research reports for Lightcast. Has anything stood out to you when it comes to employment trends and forecasts? Great question. So just to take a step back, I'll just explain that we look at labor market data in real time. And so one of the benefits of that is to uh, understand basically employment trends and forecasts in real time as opposed to lag data that sometimes happens when you're relying solely on government source data. What we're seeing right now is that there are still labor shortages generally happening. This is something that's been going on since 2021 and and through 2022. And the way that we're seeing that is that some employers are still using certain methods to try to combat those labor shortages that we can pick up in the data. So for example, employers are adding sign-on bonuses or training opportunities or other ways in which they can try to attract more workers and combat those labor shortages. And that tight labor market situation is happening in the US and also in Australia. That means that retention of talent is still really important. So it's it's really important to make sure that if you're an employer, you're thinking about how can I create opportunity for people to stay with my organization? Is it expected that it will continue to be a tight labor market in the future or will things start to balance out a little bit? You know, I'm hoping it'll be a little bit less tight um, because right now employers are having a really hard time finding the talent that they need. That being said, we haven't seen any indication that it's that it's loosening up so far. And I think through for sure the end of 2022 and likely in the first half of 2023, we'll be seeing this tight labor market. So if you're an accounting or finance professional, now is actually a great time to be looking for a job? That's correct. Workers have a lot of power right now. They can really pick and choose what type of job they want, what company they want to work for. Most companies are trying to hire more than they can find. So if you are an accountant right now, it's a great time to look for a job. And when it comes to the skills in demand for accountants and other finance professionals, what's the latest data suggesting? Yeah. So what we're seeing is that Of course, basic accounting skills are in demand, but also soft skills, things like communication, attention to detail, um, and even things like planning, stakeholder management, building effective relationships. So these are really important soft skills that I think often don't get talked about when you're thinking of an accountant skill set, but are an important part of the job. The other thing that we're seeing is some some high growth skills that maybe aren't uh, in demand across all accountants right now, but that we think might be in demand soon. And that's things that are really actually focused on data visualization. So the accountant profession is is moving towards a bigger focus on sort of communicating this data to other stakeholders. That's skills like Microsoft Power BI, Python, Tableau, and also even soft skills that go along with that, like creativity. Um, and so employers are looking to accountants to kind of add this additional lens to the data and be able to communicate it effectively with internal stakeholders, with others, because the accountants might have sort of that deeper knowledge of the data um, and might have insights that they can offer visually that others in, in roles similar couldn't. Are these high growth skills the kinds of things that people are learning more on the job? I think people are learning them on the job, but there's also a lot of micro-credentials, certificates, other sort of smaller term um, upskilling opportunities that allow people to earn these. So you can get a, uh, do a Python Coursera course or some other certificate class that will enable you to get some of these basics and then maybe translate that directly into your work. There's been a lot of talk lately about some core accounting skills being made redundant by technology. What are your thoughts on the kinds of skills that are waning or being automated? Yeah, you know, I think automation can be can be scary. A lot of people think of it as, you know, robots taking your jobs. And I think what we've seen is that 
automation is actually turning out to be very complementary to jobs. So rather than taking away an entire profession, it's taking away some skills that uh, maybe could be done in an automated way that are honestly probably kind of boring and adding in the additional need for more human skills that we've been talking about. And so I think we're seeing some of these, these maybe more technical skills potentially being automated. But again, a robot can't make a graph that's intuitive for people to understand with the right axes and, you know, colors that are accessible to a wide range of audiences and make a, you know, snappy infographic that explains sort of the state of finances in a role. And that's the type of thing that we're not seeing being automated away and that accountants are going to still need to, to, to be able to do. Is it fair to say that automation is perhaps a benefit for people starting out in their careers now because a lot of the, you know, the more dull aspects are being eradicated by technology? Yeah, I think that is fair to say. I think that there's more opportunity now to have a more creative and strategic role in this field than there might have been prior to some of these technological advancements. So it, what do you think are the biggest benefits of automation, both for professionals and for clients? For professionals, I think that it frees up their time to do more of the interesting work. So they can be thinking alongside clients, again, more strategically and creatively. And, and for clients, I think it's that they don't have to potentially worry about the risk of human error in some of these. They can probably see automatically generated reports more frequently, um, things like that, that might have taken a lot of time and, and effort in the past. And so they might get more real-time updates as well. And then adding that lens from the accountant perspective of, well, here's what this means and here's what you should do. And you know, here's how this all shakes out um, is an additional benefit. Based on your extensive research, what does a future accounting skill set look like? And what kinds of skills do you think are going to best help future-proof a career? So what we've seen actually across many, many jobs across the labor market, not only for accountants, is that there are kind of four big trends going on with skills that are currently affecting and disrupting many jobs. So one of those is digital skills. So a lot of jobs are introducing additional digital skills. These things like Python, for example, um, into roles where they didn't exist before. Another is, is soft skills. So the flip side is, again, more human skills, collaboration, building these effective relationships so that you can work successfully with people. Um, and then the third one is actually data visualization. And this is one where we're seeing, as we mentioned, Microsoft Power BI, Tableau, these types of skills coming in specifically into the accountant role. And we're seeing this across, across the labor market as well. Um, the last one is social media. I think that's a little bit less specifically relevant for accountants, but it is affecting many roles in the labor market. And so I think when you look at these four trends, uh, we've already seen that accountants have a lot of soft skills. They need to use them more, and that's increasing. They have a ton of digital skills. Some of those might be being automated, but most of them are not, and that's still really important. And these data visualization skills are really coming in and lending an additional piece to accountants, just like many other jobs. Um, and so if you think about, well, what skills should I get? I think I would focus primarily on expanding this soft skill uh, universe that, that you might be having and also expanding your data visualization abilities. Have you seen any patterns in your research when it comes to transferable skills for accountants, the kinds of skills that can cut across multiple role types? Yeah, so what we have actually seen is is what I'll call the new foundational skills, which again are kind of across the labor market, but I think are particularly relevant for accountants. And those are including human and digital skills, which we've talked a ton about. But the other one that I'll mention here is what we think of as business enabler skills. So things that allow for business processes to function across different stakeholders in a smoother way. That's project management, um, data and communication, maybe strategic advisory roles, maybe more of a consulting lens. And so I think we've seen that these are really important across uh, a wide range of experience levels and different types of roles. And I think that's particularly relevant to accountants as well. Mm, okay, terrific. Now, Leila, if you were going to share one piece of advice on what a finance professional can do now to be future ready, what would that be? I would say increase your ability to visualize data and communicate that data effectively with clients and other stakeholders. So tell a story 
with the data. Yes. Terrific. Well, thank you so much. That was really interesting. It sounds to me like soft skills are increasingly important. Uh, So teamwork and stakeholder management are things to focus on. And then we've got the high growth skills like data visualization. Um, That's going to be really key. So having a, a strong career and starting now will require some focus on those things. Thank you very much for talking to us, Leila. Thanks so much for having me. We hope you're enjoying In the Black's Career Hacks series. If you're interested in the latest news, analysis, policy updates, and business insights, you should check out CPA Australia's With Interest podcast. Join us as we dive into the news and delve into the business issues of the day. We talk to thought leaders from across the accounting, finance, strategy, economic, and business spectrum. And you get their expert opinions. Now, back to In the Black. To help us understand what employers are looking for in new recruits, I'm speaking to Michael Edelston, CPA. Michael is an experienced recruiter and business coach who specialises in senior placements within public practice accounting firms. He's also the host of the podcast, Accountants Exposed. Welcome, Michael. It's great to have you here. Thanks, Jess. Great to be here. Okay, so let's talk about CVs and interviews, Michael. What is your advice for standing out from other candidates? I've read studies that have found that a recruiter makes a decision in about six seconds as to whether the CV goes into the waste paper basket or the shortlist pile. Have you heard that? That's a slow recruiter. Oh. <laughs> Uh, mine's about three to five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Must be new to the industry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> look, uh, just these days, just uh, what will make you stand out? I'd say just doing a spelling and grammar check is a, you, you'd be way ahead of everyone by just doing that alone. Um, the amount of candidates that kind of unspell the name of the accounting body they belong to, so whether it's CPA or CA, is astounding. Probably one in five to eight CVs, uh, I would see CPA as being spelled as certified public accounts, which is the way it's spelled in, you know, like Philippines or, or US, but we have it as certified practicing account. And then practicing, how do you spell practicing? Mm-hmm. You know? So just those couple of mistakes uh, is phenomenal. Like you've done the papers, you did the tests, you put on your CV, make sure you spell it right. Look, you're not applying for a blue collar role. Like if you made spelling mistakes in blue collar role, fair enough. But like, you're applying for an accounting job. So if you can't get, like if you haven't triple checked your CV and you still have plenty of, like whether it's spelling, grammar, you're miswriting words, et cetera, punctuation, if you're not getting that right, as an employer, if my business relies on, you know, your job relies on numbers and my business relies on you getting those numbers right and my decisions rely on those numbers being correct, how can I trust you to do that job? So automatically, you'll be negatively assessed or judged. Um, you know, the other thing is like obviously tailoring your, your CV to the role. Um, cover letters look not so big of a, of a thing if you've got the experience. You mentioned the recruitment agency kind of study. Yes, 100%. Look, you've only got five seconds. So you want to make it, you want to make sure your CV is easy to read and well written and, you know, it's in reverse chronological order. I like to underline or bold key things. So because you only have five seconds. You know, I will skim read the CV and if I'm not seeing the relevant experience or the right buzzwords or anything that's important for me to go, yep, that person has the skills and experience to do the job, then I'll probably pass on it. So just having it simple, well-written, therefore easy to read, um, bold, underline, those kind of things. The other key thing that I think people don't often realize is all large organizations and recruitment agencies We'll use ATS, ATSs, so applicant tracking systems. And there's two things with that. Uh, so applicant tracking systems together with AI, so artificial intelligence, they're all kind of, you know, been around for well over five, well, 10 years plus, I'd say now. So number one is uh, we have a record of every single CV you've ever sent in to us. So if you start, you know, I see applicants suddenly changing their CV and I look back in the previous CV they sent me two years ago, three years ago, even two months ago. And I'm like, ah, that's, there's a new job that you've added. There's, uh, you know, your, your dates have shifted when you worked for that place. So you've closed off some of the gaps. 
Uh, which is, look, I get it. You're trying to get a job. Fair enough. But just being aware that the ATS does have a history of all of your applications, especially if you apply it multiple times to that agency or, or company. Another thing is because of AI, what happens when you submit your application is the AI will compare the job description in the system to your CV. And if it doesn't see any buzzwords that are in the job description, it's not going to give you a higher rank. So you will automatically be put in a pile of like the no pile or even the maybe a maybe pile. So if you want to rank highly, high enough to at least get a look in by a human, which is sad, but that's just the reality of the system, um, you need to rank high enough. And then to achieve that, you need to have the buzzword. So if the job description is asking you for people that have experience with automation or Python or um, you know SQL or particular tax issues, then you need to have them listed in your CV because it literally just looks at how many times you've listed in your CV. And if it matches the job description, be like, oh yeah, this candidate is probably a good candidate. Um, and then it will rank you high enough for a human to have a look at you. Um, so that's something to for, for people to kind of keep in mind. The other thing is, is addressing some of the gaps. So people that have gaps in the CV have short duration roles because no one likes a job hopper. So, you know, if it was a contract, then make sure it's clear there's a contract. If you weren't traveling, then explain why there's a two year gap in your in your history. Like otherwise you're leaving it to the other person to make assumptions, which depending on what assumption they go for, might preclude you from a job interview. Whereas if it makes sense to them in their head, well then they'll be like, oh yeah, cool, the person went traveling, fair enough. Or yes, there was a contract, they're not a job hopper. They just did three contracts in a row and that's okay. Um, and then I think achievements need to be highlighted. So depending on the seniority of the role, obviously it's, you know, if you're very junior, it's hard to have achievements, but if you're, the more senior you are, the more achievements there should be, not just your responsibilities and make sure they're quantifiable like or real. Like it's not just implemented a software. Uh, cool. Like, you know, what was the challenge in the project? How much time did you save by implementing the software? How much money did you save, uh, by, using the latest software. Like I want to see that you've researched that you've implemented, you were the team leader for it, you've trained people on it. And because of that, now a job that used to take two weeks now takes you two days. And that's created a $22,000 cost saving. Something like that. If you want to, you ask me how you can stand out, I think the biggest way to standing out is actually more offline. So picking up the phone and calling the person that's looking to hire and having just a meaningful conversation so you can actually display your communication skills, number one, ask some engaging questions. At the end of the day, we're all human. So if if I connect, even though you might not have a great CV, and to be honest, if I looked at your CV, I wouldn't have even considered you. But because of we've made, you know, we've had this exchange, we've connected, you're human, I like you. Just by virtue of that, I'll probably give you a chance, at least have an interview with you. So offline will always make you stand out more than online. Oh, and there's an, another big thing that people forget is you leave a digital trail now. So make sure digital digital trail kind of, kind of presents you in a in an appropriate manner. Whenever you apply for a job, you will get Googled. So if your Facebook pics or your Facebook posts or Instagram posts are questionable, perhaps either make them completely private uh, or change them, you know, because you will be judged. Like, yes, it's your personal life, but reality is we're all human and we do judge. Like that's just how life works. You know, same as your LinkedIn, you know, make sure your LinkedIn is up to scratch. Like your photo is presentable, your description makes sense. It's well-written. The dates correspond to the, to the CV because the amount of times I get LinkedIn profiles that don't correspond to the CV is, is huge. Like, I'm like, well, are you lying? Like what, or do you not have attention to detail? Like what, what's going on there? Like straight away, there's a red flag for me. Uh, so make sure they line up. Try and get some recommendations from your previous bosses on LinkedIn as well. That's always good. Yeah, so I'd say that's probably the biggest advice to stand out. Mm, okay. I mean, I can keep going, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's that's all really solid advice. So people can perhaps give their CV to a friend because I think you can make assumptions, oh, of course I was traveling, like you wouldn't even think to point that out. Or yes, it was, especially it was a contract. So I think giving it to someone... Or or redundancy or something. But like, if you come across as a job hopper, I'm not going to want to employ sure. you because 
people don't understand that from an employer's perspective, to you, it's just a job. From an employer's perspective, it's their client, it's their livelihood, it's their business, it's um, it's their time to train you. You know, it's an investment. It'll take you six to nine months to get competent in the job. And if you leave after nine months or a year, well, then that's a waste of their time. It's time and money lost. Yeah. 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 Michael, what do you think accountants should be doing now to prepare for the future so that they can make sure that they have fulfilling careers over the long term and some really good opportunities along the way? Broadly speaking, my suggestion is just always understand the frameworks of the basic concept. Like, If you want to be valued, then be valuable. You add value to whoever you're working with, to wherever you're working. I think we've been fortunate enough in Australia where we had this you know, huge economic success over the last 20 plus years, you know, and huge salaries. So I find people get very complacent when life is very easy and you know everyone's earning a lot of money and jobs are everywhere, et cetera. So you don't really need to add much value. You just need to show up and just get your job done. And that's okay. And that's good enough for most people to earn a really high income. But I think if things change, like right now we're going to a lot more of an economically uncertain situation over the next 12 months. So similar to what happened, I guess, 2008, nine, you know, nine where people do start losing their jobs when the market does become more competitive, then people will look at, well, what did you achieve in the previous role? What, how did you add value? Did you actually do anything meaningful? You just showed up, you know, were you just a clock watcher, nine to five? We actually put in a bit of effort. And if I call your boss, he'll say, this guy is amazing. You know, like he always put up his hand for projects, led a, you know, led a transformation for us, was happy to to train people, was happy to stay back and help the team, et cetera, et cetera. So in terms of what accountants can do, I think do like, A, understand the business you're in, number one. It's amazing how many people don't understand the business they're actually in. They just come in, do their job, then zero interest, zero curiosity. So understand the business, understand your boss's priorities uh, and therefore see what can be improved, suggest some ideas, do some projects. A, will help you in your skill sets because it'll challenge you, you'll learn something. B, you'll get a boss that loves you. Wherever that boss goes, you can go anywhere. Whoever is in that boss's network, internally or externally, that's a job for you at any time. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like people don't really see that connection. And just do some self-learning, just understand that the pace of change is a lot faster than it ever used to be. So don't rely, I find people like rely on their company and their boss to train them. Like don't rely on anyone. This is your career. This is your job. Take responsibility for it. No one else is responsible for it. So do some self learning. So learn about crypto, learn about smart contracts, learn about the latest tech that's being rolled out in the US for data visualization. And you know what? If you read something cool about it, the investigator called the company up, you know, do, do a test, run of that software and if you think that could be used in your company it will save time because you know your company's processes have a chat to your boss and say hey guys this is what i've done i reckon you know i did a little test run with it did a trial period whatever and i reckon it can save us about 20 hours a fortnight you know a week uh, at, at this cost i think it's worthwhile let's investigate you know people like that will always have a job yeah they sure will a boss would would definitely be happy to hear someone taking that kind of initiative and it's not that hard. It just takes that extra step of, I'm not just an employee. I'm not just here to get a paycheck. And I think you know? that people who listen to the CPA Career Hacks podcast are the self-starting type. Yeah. Okay, Michael. Um, if you had one piece of advice on what someone can do now to prepare for the future, what would that be? Be curious and be a doer. So I think you'll you'll always be in demand if you know your stuff and you get stuff done. Just to wrap up this episode, we've had Layla O'Kane of Lightcar sharing future trends in finance and accountancy. One of the high growth skills that she identified was data visualization. Layla also mentioned that automation will result in teamwork and stakeholder management gaining more importance. We've also heard from Michael, who has given us some really good tips You can be a great professional, but simply by not providing the correct justification for why there might be a gap in your CV or whether you did a few contract roles, whether there was a redundancy or something along the way, um, you don't want to get into the no thank you pile, which, as Michael says, takes about three to four seconds. So tailor your CV to the job. And if 
list achievements, not just responsibilities, and make sure those achievements are quantifiable. So use your numbers. If you've enjoyed this episode, help others discover In the Black by leaving us a review and sharing this episode with colleagues, clients, or anyone else interested in leadership strategy and business. To find out more about our other podcasts, check out the show notes for this episode. And we hope you can join us again next time for another episode of In the Black.